Hello, this is Suzanne in Ohio. I have a new journal to show you. This um, project has been going on most of the summer because I worked on it real slow. And I was working out the logistics as I went. So it's kind of different. You might find the construction um, intriguing or confusing, whichever the case might be. But let me show you how I put this together. First, it's just tied up with a little piece of uh, fabric. And let me show you the overall construction so that you can understand it as we go. This journal is a concertina style. It accordions out. Now, I know it probably looks very confusing on the camera, but it works very simply. And I'll show you what I mean. So when you look at the journal from the front, um, there's some things to open. But you open the first major flap, and there's a whole lot of things tucked in here, several things. And then you get to the next section and open it. And there are several things in here, which I will show you more in a minute. And then you get to the last, actually next to last, there it is, the last section where there's journaling pages stuck in between. So you basically have three major sections and each one is full of stuff. Then you turn it over like you're looking at it from the back and then there are two major sections if you can see that. So here being one and here being a second. And then what I did as I put it together is I maxed out um, as elaborately as space would allow uh, to put more and more interesting things in there. So when you look at it right from the front, the first little thing you see um, are these little, um, I don't know, gla uh, glassine envelope type things. And I made them out of an old photo album. This was one of those parents albums from a wedding back in the 60s. And uh, it lended itself just perfect uh, for a pocket. Similar to the size of a CD, but close. All right, so what I did was um, the pages of the album were coming unglued and apart. So I went ahead and decorated something on the inside. Then I stitched it together, leaving an opening. Well, and I sewed the glassine in. In this case, it was uh, pieces of that heavier acetate that's used for overhead projectors. So that worked out just perfect. And then just decorated it with uh, whatever was on my desk. So the first thing you do is open that up. And of course, there's little decoration here. Lots of fabric hinges. Uh, this paper here, oh, I had fun with this. This is discharging the color on construction paper, or in my case, it was uh, cardstocks. I have a big selection, and discharging the color with bleach. And as you discharge the color, you don't know what the base color is underneath. And in this case, it was cream, and so it came out beautifully. I used those rubber stamps that were... They're big and flat, they're foam stamps, and just dipped it in a watered-down bleach solution and tapped it on. I just love the um, effect, and I'll probably do more of that. So when you open this one, here, over here on this side, you've got a pocket and a pocket with an empty pocket in it, and even this is a pocket. So uh, let's see, one, two three real pockets and anything else that you can slide in there. Let me set this aside. That's for in a minute. And then these signatures open from left to right. This one does. Uh, some old ephemera found papers, different things. And on this surface is a belly band, which I don't have anything in it right now. 
So we'll close that back up and that's actually just all attached to the front cover. And you can see the uh, journal jewelry here. I had some beads that uh, were kind of real boho style and I used them on here. So when you open this up, uh, here's a little flap and then another flap, just writing paper and space, all kinds of space. Some of my ink stained papers, a whole bunch of uh, found papers and collages that I have made. And that's just tucked inside the first leaflet. So over here on this side is a swinging pocket. Let me take this out so you can really see. Uh, just made out of file folders. And with uh, this is a tuck spot, this little piece right here. And so you've got a tuck spot and a pocket and then a pocket on this side. And I just um, put in little ephemera that I made put together. So when you open that up, you've got this pocket and also this mushroom is a tuck spot. So you can slip something in that. And this is um, the blue fading out to lavender. That was a discharge piece of paper too. Uh, a decorated envelope with stamps and a napkin, decoupage napkins. And then this little booklet, just a bunch of found papers and some collages. And just add something extra in there in case you want to take it along with you and then put it back in the journal. So then when you turn this page, We've got a signature here. Uh, some, some of these papers, very few of them, but I've purchased them from Etsy sellers. And I, I'm sorry. Hey, I have a suggestion for all you Etsy graphic artists. Somewhere in the image, put your initials, the name of your shop, the initials of your shop in a little circle. Somewhere indiscreet, and then we can all remember where those pages came from. So a collage I made, uh, copies of old letters from 1843, and just whatever I had laying on my desk, and then a little tuck spot with two little pieces of ephemera here. And that little page is made out of um, Fabric Arts uh, image that I had. Uh, hydrangeas that I printed right on my scanner, scanned them and printed them. And let me show you the other side so you can get an idea. It was a large hydrangea, stem leaf, and then I printed it on um, regular plain paper. Now I've told this um, process before, but now's a good time for you to really see how it works. I take the paper to my ironing board and I wax it. And I use canning wax by Golf, just the same canning wax that you would melt to put in the top of your jars if you're making, oh, typically you find it on uh, preserves or jam. And then it becomes transparent and you can see through it. There's just a scrap of paper found, a collage that I had made, some stenciling work, and then the back page, well, it's probably not the back page, maybe it is, I don't know, but just scraps glued together. Over here on this side, a pocket with a little windowed envelope. And here's a little uh, craft paper envelope that I just decorated up. I was rescuing these envelopes from a project from a long time ago. One of those matchbook. And for somebody who doesn't know what they are, matchbook notebooks, just full of a bunch of odds and ends of found papers. And they're made and tucked closed just like an old-fashioned matchbook. A little um, journaling card, and that goes in there. So here's the back of the hydrangea. And then we're on to the next major fold. And I put um, one of these images in here from my greeting cards, my textile artwork sewing. 
slow stitch, whatever you want to call it. So then you can see now this is quite hefty here. We're going to turn the next major section over. And on this cover, I have an extra insert flap here and beautiful collage from an Etsy seller. And these two items form a tuck spot and a lot of little papers just to write on. And that's real simple. And then you open it up and here you've got another small signature with found papers of all kinds. All right. So that's just on the on the first flap of the second major section. So here we start into um, some plain papers, coffee dyed, a little piece out of one of those birthday address books found it at the thrifty store, and and then a translation of an old poem from 1865 and I made a pocket out of it and in the pocket slips a nice little booklet that um, I made several of these out of those beautiful images out of ideals books because if you fold or tear or sew in just the right place you get beautiful images uh, as the front of your cover. And then each, uh, the front and the back cover are both a pocket. You can see that opens up. So you can use that for a little hiding spot. Anyways, that's stuck right here in this pocket that I created. Let's put it in this way. And then, um, oh, ink and coffee dyed paper an image of one of my textiles and that also forms a pocket down in there and the back side is a print ephemera print of an old um, telegraph a telegram and then the other set, the rest of these papers okay here we are at that now on this plain surface here's a fold down um, little journaling spot and then one of these, um, I don't know who invented this, I'll have to go back and look through videos, but it's a cleverest way to fold up extra paper. And if you glue it on right, it also forms a pocket right here. So you could slip something tall and skinny down in the back side of it. But then it unfold it, write on it, and then close it back up, and it holds itself together like that. So we're going to go to the next little section. And now, mind you, we're still in the middle of the second major section. So here's another little area. And in here, I put all of my hand-dyed polymer papers. And I left them plain so that you can decorate them. Or you can rip them out, tear them out, and use them for notes. And then glue them and put them anywhere you want. So... <clears throat> Here's um, one of the back next covers, left plane, and another one of those little glassined window pockets that I made out of that old photo album. So just a journaling card and decorated the front of it. That's a, actually a tuck spot right there, and I put the front of that old, um, that image of that old book in there as another journaling card. So plain on the back so you can write on it or whatever you want to do. Um, this um, little farm scene background, I just had to use that rooster. I loved him. And that forms a large pocket. And in there, I put something in reference to fall and an image of one of my textiles. So coming over here, is uh, another one of those papers that I have waxed. And this was just an image of a cross stitch of a tablecloth. And then you can see how transparent it becomes after you wax it. Very, very fun. And a little cluster collage, and I sewed it right on with a backing on it because once you wax that paper, it doesn't uh, take to glue very well. So I laid this in the background for strength 
and then I stitched right around my little fabric uh, textile right there. Another image of um, watering can and a trowel that I had done a long time ago, and that forms a very large pocket. And then just some found papers, collages. There's a fabric textile collage that I did pertaining to the ocean. And there's the back of it. All left nice. Plenty of writing space. Plenty of mounting area for photographs or memorabilia of any kind. And there's the back side of the tablecloth right there. So on this flap, I created a little tuck spot, roses and lace and just stuck in that little thing there. And then when you turn the next major section, you've got a nice big spot here for whatever you want to use it for. Uh, some coffee dyed paper. And I think I, yes, all coffee dyed paper in this section. And a little hodgepodge of mismatched papers, mistorn, all that kind of thing. Over here, um, a belly band and then a pocket. Let me show you this belly band right here and a pocket right there and another pocket right here. And so this slips out and what I made was just almost like a little uh, well, there's a collage on one side. And then I just washi taped some of these nice little things from an Etsy seller. And you can, as you know, a washi tape will just pull right off, pull gently. And then you can write on it, move it around, and put it anywhere you want um, in your journal. So this pocket was formed out of an envelope. And here's the other side of it right here. And um, I had a print from an old envelope from 1943, and I glued it on there, left the texture, and the, this little thing is a tuck spot up here. So now we are at the back cover, and here's one of those pin loops, uh, just to hold whatever pin that you want for your project, and an antique looking collage that I put together there. I have these images myself that were in a frame. I copied them off, I tore them, I printed them, I created the collage, then I scanned it, and then I can print it out any size that I want. You've heard me say that many times before. So now we're at the back. Hold on a second. Got to fold this one flap in. We're at the back of the journal, and this is a pocket with a glassine window here, and I haven't put anything in it. And you can fill it with whatever you'd like. So now we're actually looking at the back of the journal, and now we can open it this way. So we want to uh, look at what's in between these major sections. First of all, there's a pocket here, very sturdy. That's out of um, heavy cardstock. And then an image, writing space another image. I forget what little book I got this out of, but beautiful little images. More coffee dyed papers. Tons of writing area. And then we're over here um, to a piece of ephemera that forms a tuck spot. So now we're going to turn this whole big fat section and you can see here that I've th sewn three signatures in that open up from the other side and there you can see the binding and that's how that works. So we're going to open this major section here and in here is um, oh a collage that I did, another collage. Uh, this is a little tuck spot, some found papers, all kinds of cutesy stuff in here, but plenty of room to make it your own. And that's the back cover of that tiny little signature. Here, um, um, this is a double pocket. See, that is a pocket. And then right behind it, that old handwriting that forms a second pocket. So now we're going to turn the last major section 
and we are back to the front. So basically you have three major sections if you're turning from the front and two major sections if you're turning from the back. But each section has all kinds of extras in it. So I just had such fun thinking it through and putting it together and then I don't know how many trips to the sewing machine because I sewed a lot of the fabric on um, and then glued as well and it's very sturdy. It'll last a long, long time. So here's the other little item that goes with this. Um, the base, the outside base for this is used in that Artie Mays technique of collaging and then putting gesso on it and then some stamping and I have several of those that I made and I used it for this. This is just a little um, folder type thing that will go along with the journal because it holds some things you might want to use. Alright, so I made our strap with one of those plastic snaps and I just bought myself a set of those and I just love how it works and they're supposed to hold up forever. I hope they do. So I have this uh, paper strap cardstock strap and then it opens up into like a little folio type thing where you have two major pockets on each side and I filled it full of word prompts and different things that you can cut out and uh, tape or or glue any place in your journal. Now I was telling somebody the other day um, sometimes you just need a little help getting started in your journaling so you can take one of these little sayings like this one says reach out cut that out uh, ink the edges if you want and tape it or glue it in and just write some thoughts down about what you might be wanting to do to reach out to somebody and who and why and then give something away I like that saying right here give something away what some of your time or an actual item or contribute some money to a worthy cause whatever you want to do and then behind the word prompts there's just some little paraphernalia ephemera type stuff back here uh, for you to use anywhere you want in the journal so this is my Constantina journal and I had such fun making it and um, if you're interested more in the construction, I thought I would make up just a plain white one and use it as an example just to demonstrate how exactly it went together. So if you're interested in that, let me know. I'll do a video on how I put this together and how to then go about figuring out where to put all the extra stuff. So there you have it. Um, this will be up on my Etsy site sometime later today. <clears throat> Pardon me. And if you're interested uh, to just go there and see some more pictures, do that. Or if you're interested in purchasing, you'll find it later today. All right. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it.